Should you add oxygenating plants to your pond? It seems to make sense. You need oxygen in that water and oxygenating plants produce oxygen. So that sounds like a good thing, but maybe not. When I built the pond that I use as an example in my book, Building Natural Ponds, I didn't include oxygenating plants. And that pond has been going for about 15 years now I still have not added oxygenating plants. So in this video, I'd like to ask the question, should you add them and do you need them? And let's try to better understand these plants. So what are oxygenating plants? Well, these are plants that live their whole life under the water. A good example is something like Elodea. It grows submerged under the water and if it gets really tall, it might show a little bit above the surface, but it doesn't really grow above the water. Another one you might be familiar with is Cabamba. Now some plants will root in the soil below water and then grow above water. And as long as the leaves are below the water, they will oxygenate a bit, but they're usually not part of the group of oxygenating plants. And a better term probably is submerged plants. So what are the claimed benefits for these plants? I went online and tried to get a list of all the benefits these plants have and quite honestly some of them don't make a lot of sense to me. They filter nutrients out of the water. Well that's true. Any green plant that's growing needs nutrients so it takes nutrients out of the water. But that's not unique to oxygenating plants. Everything that grows above the water, like water lilies for instance, they also take nutrients out of the water. So that's not really a special benefit. Oxygenating plants shade the water so algae doesn't grow. Well, that's not really true, is it? I mean, they're growing in the water, so they're not shading the surface. Algae can easily grow above them and still get sunlight. I mean, if your goal is to shade the water, and keep algae down and, and that's a good goal you're better off using something like water lilies that actually do shade the water so i would never select oxygenating plants to shade the water these plants provide a place for fish and frogs to lay their eggs and that claim is true so there is value in that now i've had goldfish breed in my pond for a number of years and I don't have oxygenating plants, they find some place to lay their eggs so you don't need these plants to raise fish. The last and maybe most important claim is that these oxygenating plants add oxygen to the water. And we're going to have a closer look at that claim in this video. As it turns out, it's only partially true. So why is oxygen important? Well, the fish and the insects, they need oxygen in that water to live. So the oxygen level in the water is important. The air that we're breathing has an oxygen level of about 200,000 parts per million. A high level of oxygen in water is about 20 parts per million. Huge difference. When that oxygen level drops from 20 to below 3 parts per million, fish have problems breathing and they start dying. So we have to keep the oxygen level above three to keep the fish happy. How does the oxygen level in a pond change? Well, there's quite a few things that make it change. A big one is wind. When the wind blows across the water, it wiggles the top of the water. And when that happens, you get a lot of exchange of gases. So oxygen will move into the water, and more importantly, CO2 in the water will move out into the air. The gases are constantly being adjusted when the wind blows. Now, of course, one of the problems is that if you grow a lot of plants on the surface, like water lilies, they prevent that water from moving. So you do get less exchange of the gases. Temperature also plays a big role. Cold water holds more oxygen than warm water. So in the spring and fall when things are cool, oxygen usually isn't an issue in the water. But as the year goes along and summer comes and it gets warmer and warmer, the temperature of the water climbs. And as the temperature goes up, the amount of oxygen in the water goes down. And that's why you find on really hot days, the fish are gulping for air. They're running out of oxygen in that water because of the temperature. Now, one thing a lot of people don't realize is that there's something else that uses oxygen in that water, besides the fish and the insects. 
and that is decomposing organic matter. So in the fall, that leaf falls in the water and settles on the bottom, and then the following year it starts to decompose. That process of decomposition requires oxygen, and it sucks it out of the water. If you have an algae bloom or a bacterial bloom, and then it crashes, now you have a lot of dead microbes in that water, and they start to decompose. That sucks up a lot of oxygen. So the more decomposing matter you have in that pond, the lower your oxygen level will be. And because a lot of that organic matter settles to the bottom of the pond, that's usually the place with the lowest amount of oxygen. Near the surface, you've got some wind and some gas exchange, so the oxygen level could be all right, but near the bottom, it's too low. The last thing that changes the oxygen level in water are plants. And when plants are growing under the water, they're photosynthesizing. They take in CO2, they take the sunlight, and they produce sugars. And in that process, they give off oxygen. Now, when you have a cattail and it's two feet above water and the leaves are up here, it's doing the same thing, but the oxygen it's producing escapes to the air. It doesn't go back into the water for the most part. The same with water lilies. They have those flat leaves on the surface, and all the oxygen they produce actually goes into the air, not into the water. Now, there are a couple exceptions to this, and cattails are one of them. They are actually able to make that oxygen in the leaves and then pump it down to their roots. And so they do give off some oxygen under the water, even though the leaves are above the water. But the contribution of that is relatively small. Now, there are two kinds of oxygenating plants. They're the ones that you might go to the store and buy and put in the pond. They look like normal plants, but there's a much more important plant that's involved here, and that's algae. All of the algae in the water could be string algae growing on some rocks, or it could be that green stuff that's floating around. That's all algae. Those are plants, they photosynthesize, and they also produce oxygen just like the higher order plant. So if you have a lot of algae in the water, that's actually producing a lot of extra oxygen for your fish. So algae is not necessarily a bad thing in a pond. I've talked about the fact that plants can use sunlight and produce oxygen, but there's something else going on that's critical here. All living organisms, plants, insects, fish, humans, animals, doesn't matter. They're all using up oxygen. And they use that to convert the sugars they have, the food that they've eaten, and convert that into energy. And that energy allows them to grow. And this happens 24 hours of the day. So during the day, the plants are producing oxygen through photosynthesis, but they're also using up oxygen to convert these sugars. So during the day, they're, they're kind of balancing each other out. But when the sun goes down, photosynthesis stops. They stop making oxygen, but the other processes are still going on. So all night long, plants are actually using up oxygen, just like the fish. Now here's a chart that shows this. This chart is plotting the amount of oxygen in the water over a day. And you can see that at dawn, we have the lowest amount of oxygen. All right, plants have been using it up all night long, but they haven't been producing any because the sun's not out. Then at dawn, the light starts and they start photosynthesizing. So even though they're using up some oxygen, they're actually producing a little more than they use and the oxygen level in the pond increases. And that increase takes place during the day. As we get down to dusk, photosynthesis slows down, once it gets dark, it stops, and now there's no more oxygen being produced but plants are still using it up. So the level drops and reaches a low point at dusk. And this cycle happens every day. So here's the problem with oxygenating plants. It's true that they produce oxygen and they add that oxygen to the water, but that only happens during the day. Those same oxygenating plants use up oxygen during the night. So if you have a lot of those, they can actually reduce the oxygen level down to a point where your fish can't get enough. So when we say that oxygenating plants add oxygen to the water, it is true, but they also take it out. 
So I'm not convinced they're a good thing to add to the pond. When I build my natural ponds, I leave those plants out. For one reason, I don't want to have an oxygen deficiency during the night. The other reason is that a lot of these plants don't grow very well. And if I'm growing water lilies above them, they get too shaded and they die off producing organic matter. And that organic matter also sucks away oxygen. I don't want extra organic matter in there. So what I do is I grow plants that are sitting in water, that have roots in water, but most of the leaves are above the water. So skip the oxygenating plants and build your pond without them. Here are a bunch more videos on how to build natural ponds.